Hi everyone, my name is Giovanna Proença and today we're going to talk about the problem set 6 called cash. So basically in this problem we're going to do the same exercise that we did in problem set 1 that has the same name cash, but in this case we're going to do using Python and not C language anymore, all right? So to start, I already put here the code, all the parts that we have to do, okay? I just grab the source code, the distribution code of the problem set 1 and I just use it here the comment okay but before we start let's understand what we're going to do so in this problem we're gonna receive the amount of change that we own to the customer all right and we're gonna calculate how many coins we're gonna return so what this means we can only return the change using four types of coins that are the quarters nickels dimes and pennies that are the regular coins that we have in US our task will be counting how many coins we're going to use to return the change, okay? So to complete this task, we have to follow one rule. We need to return the smallest number of coins with which that change can be made. For example, if we have to give us change $0.41, we would return one quarter, that is 25 cents. We're gonna return one dime, that is 10 cents, one nickel, that is 5 cents, and one penny, that is 1 cent. And if we sum all of these values together, it will be 41 cents. The first part we need to do is get how much change is owed. For this, we're going to ask the user how many dollars. Then we need to check if the value given is a positive integer. If it is not, we're going to keep asking the user. Otherwise, we will convert the amount in dollars into cents. How can we do this? We're going to multiply the value by 100. What we did for quarters, we're gonna do exactly the same process for the other types of coin. But instead of using 25, that is the value of a quarter, we're gonna use the respective value for the other coins. So for example, if we are working with dimes, we're gonna subtract 10. If we're working with nickels, we're gonna subtract 5. And if we're working with pennies, we're gonna subtract 1. All right, so this is the main idea. Now let's try to implement all the logic in here. So now let's start implementing this idea of getting the number uh, and then multiply it by 100, okay? So in here, in our main function, before, let's take a look in here in the requirement. In the specification, he's telling us to use the get float from the CS50 library. So we're gonna use this get float. So in, a, in the case that we can't forget to use this, let's import this function from the from CS50 library. So from, oops from CS50 import get float okay so just the word get float now we're gonna create in here in our main function I created some functions in here the same the same principles of cash one so in here we're gonna ask how many cents the customer is owed all right and we're gonna store this in a variable so cents will be equals to our function here that I call get cents. Okay, so our function get cents will return to us how many cents we're gonna work in this case, in each case. Okay, so we're gonna call the function get cents and it has no argument in here. Okay, now let's implement the function get cents. So function prompts the user for a number of cents using get float. Sorry get float. If the user inputs a negative float, a negative number, your code should prompt the user again. So how are we going to do this? We're going to do a while loop, all right, and we're going to do a while true. What a while true means, we're going to keep asking the user until we break the, the loop in here, okay? So for every time or in every iteration, what are we gonna do? We're gonna create a variable that will be called change. And for every iteration, we're gonna ask the user for the number. So we're gonna use the function get float that prompts the user, okay? And we're gonna write here change owed. This is what they are expecting us to write. If you see here in the top, change owed, okay? And then, after we get, we ask the user for a number, we're gonna check if it's a number for real, and we're also gonna check if it's a positive value, okay? So to check if it's a positive number, we're gonna do if change is greater or equals to zero. So if this is true, we're gonna break our while loop, all right? So if this is true, we're gonna break, otherwise we're gonna keep asking the user until the user prompts something right, okay? Then, 
outside our while loop. Now we're gonna convert our change into a number that is in cents because the change here we're gonna receive in a dollar, in dollars, all right? Then we have to turn this into cents. So like we saw previously in the explanation, we're gonna multiply by a hundred, okay? So we're going to do cents will be equals to change times a hundred. And in the end, we're gonna return cents because we wanna store the value of cents in our cents variable here, okay? So now that we finished the function, let's try it out. Let's see if we're getting the right uh, prompt here. So if we run Python cache.py, we're being asked here. So if I put a number that it's minus 10, it's asking again, so he's only accepting positive values. Let's try it out if we put a string like foo and he, it's going to ask again. And if I put like 1.1, it will stop. So this means that it's working. Okay, so, so far so good. Now let's go to the next explanation and then doing the other functions. Now we need to count how many coins we're gonna use as change. And to count how many coins, we're gonna separate them into each type of coin that we have. For example, we need to count how many quarters we can use as change to the value of 78 cents. To do this, we need to check how many quarters fits this number. So we're going to do a loop in each every iteration we will subtract 25 from the amount of change. Meanwhile, we need to keep track of how many quarters we already have used. To do so, we're going to have a count variable that will restore this for us. Then, after subtracting 25 from the change, we need to increase the value of the counter variable by 1, which means that we are using one quarter so far. After this, our change that was 78 become 53. We're going to do another iteration in which we will subtract 25 again, resulting in 28. And we will add one more unit in our count variable, which means that 